afternoon and welcome to everyone that's here this afternoon. I just want to ask you, if you because we've been sitting for a while, would you mind just taking a quick stand where you are and turn to the person next to you and say, you look beautiful today. Do that for me. I know it's a little bit windy. The people have been sitting for a while. It's great to have everybody just relax as best as you can. If you can take your seats again, that will be great. What a high Sabbath we have had. And I just want to just to acknowledge all of the families that are here to support our sister Rosie, our sister Vivian, and also our sister Leanne. And I am really proud to be able to welcome you. And I beg your pardon, I have mispronounced your name. It's Lillian. So let me just say on behalf of our pastor, jean -Well, who's here with us, and my brother Noah, who's going to lead us in prayer, there is a thought that was on my mind, and that's Mark, found in Mark chapter 16, verse 16. For those who believe and those who are baptized will be saved. And that is our prayer for our worship and our beginning of our welcomes uh, afternoon. And for those of you here, thank you for being with us. And I would just like to invite our brother Noah to come forward and lead us with a word of prayer. Oh, may we pray? Our Father, we thank you. Um, we thank you for um, the. Um, Our Father, our Art in Heaven, I will thank you for being our God at this particular time. We just want to thank you for the baptismal candidates who are among us. They have been waiting for this time, and today it has come. A time when they are declaring um, and choosing publicly and showing the world that um, they are clinging to you and they're divorcing the world. And as we also understand, that as they are getting baptized, there is joy in heaven mm. for um, the repentance of a sinner that brings joy to you. We just want to pray that Lord help them in 
this new war which they are committing their lives into. And together with us, just help us. We walk together until the end of this journey. We know there shall be trials and troubles, but God help us forever until the end of life or the coming of the second coming. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray and Jesus, Jesus, oh, how I trust him. Do we all trust Jesus here? Amen. I want to welcome all of you again, dear friends who have come to honor the baptism of uh, Vivian, Lillian, and also Rosie. We just came from another baptism, by the way. Um, her name is Leah. It was beautiful. In fact, it seems that all of us will be baptized this afternoon. The rain seems to be coming. So let's prepare ourselves for a good baptism, a shower of blessing. There was a little boy. Uh, he went to bed. And apparently he was very thirsty, but he didn't drink before he went to bed. So five minutes after he was put in bed, he screamed. He said, Dad, please, can you bring me some water to drink? 
And then the dad said, listen, you should have done that before going to bed. Now it's time to sleep. Sleep. Well, the boy tried to sleep. And guess what? Five minutes later, he screamed a little bit louder. Dad, please bring me some water to drink. I'm thirsty. And uh, the dad said, listen, you should have done this before. In fact, I'm going to come and give you a spank if you continue like that. Five minutes later on, the little boy screamed, Dad, when you come and give me my spank, please bring me some water to drink. That little boy was thirsty. My question to you right now is this. Have you ever been thirsty? All of us. Have we ever been thirsty? Well, I'm not talking about this thirst of physical water. What about this thirst of spiritual water? Wow. I want to share with you a story from the Bible. A lady who was thirsty. She did not realize she was thirsty until she met Jesus at the Jacob's well. Let us pray. Father, as we open the Bible, please open our hearts. Open our eyes, spiritual eyes, so that we can see you. We can see the bigger picture that in the hearts of men and women, even children, there is a thirst. And this thirst is not about physical water. It's about the thirst for God. Please guide us at this time. And may you bless us. If it is your will, please hold the rain that we can have a wonderful time just celebrating the new birth of these three wonderful people. If it is not your will, if it is your will to pour the rain, God, we want to praise you in the rain. But bless us now with your word in Jesus' name. Amen. We open the Bible. We open the Bible and we read in John. John chapter 4. That's the story of the Samaritan woman. Well, I won't read the whole story because it's quite long. But the Bible says that one day a woman went to Jacob's well. And she went to the well to, 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 to get water for herself, for her flock, and so forth. But guess what? When she reached the well, she met Jesus. It, it's very interesting. Jesus had a wonderful conversation with her. And notice what Jesus said eventually. Thank you. Jesus says, in fact, I read here, a woman from Samaria came. Thank you, buddy. So the Bible says a woman from Samaria, thank you so much, uh, Beth, came to draw water. Now it's leaving me now. Look at that. Look at that. Now. It's going down now. <laughs> that's right. That's right. God bless you. Now. There it is. A woman from Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away to buy some food. The Samaritan woman said to him, how is it that you are a Jew? You're asking me, a um, Samaritan woman, for water. Then they started to talk. And then Jesus went on. Let's move now to verse, um, to verse 11. The woman said sir, to him, sir, you have not, nothing to draw water with. And the well is deep. Where do you get the living water? So Jesus said to that to that woman, listen, you, you're going to give me physical water, but I have a water that I want to give you. In fact, Jesus said, you know, you've come to this Jacob's well to get physical water, but I have a water that comes from above. Jesus says, everyone who drinks the water from Jacob's well, where you came, where, where, where you're coming to get water, water for yourself everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again but whoever drinks of the water that i will give him will never be thirsty again 
The water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Now, this woman was touched when she heard what Jesus was saying. What was Jesus meaning when he said to the woman, listen, if you drink of this water from Jacob's well, you will be thirsty again. Whereas if you drink of that water that I shall give to you, you will never thirst again. That's the little point I wanted to, to deal with before we go into the water to baptize these people. What was Christ trying to say here? Vivian, Lillian, Rosie, what is the meaning? Well, let me tell you something, folks. Here, Jesus was referring the the, the physical water that Jesus was talking about represents the things of this world. Many people, they have a thirst. But guess what? Instead of quenching this thirst with God, they go and find something from the world to quench their thirst. I was one of these people. I used to feel an urge in my heart for something. It was not able to explain what was the thing that my heart was after. And guess what? I just went into the world and tried to find stuff in the world to fill my heart with. Jesus says, listen, if you do that, you will be thirsty again. Why? Because I've made you such a way that only me can satisfy your soul. Can we say amen? Every single person on earth, we have an emptiness in our heart. And unless Jesus fills this emptiness with himself, with his presence, with his holiness, with his Holy Spirit, we will always be thirsty. Can I add something? You can even go to church and still experience the emptiness of the heart. Are you listening? Many people, they go to church and they think that because I'm going to church, I'm complete. I'm a good person. Let me tell you something. In each one of us, there is a massive hole. And God created us this way. That is why every single person on earth has this emptiness of the heart. The problem, you know, is what? Is we don't know what it means. And guess what? We start to go left and right. Some people, for example... They try to fill the emptiness of the heart with drugs, some with alcohol, some with sex, others with money. And finally, they think that these things in the world will be able to satisfy their soul, quench their thirst. But guess what? Jesus says it will never work. Why? Because God has created us with a formula. You know what is this formula all about? It's Christ and me. Unless Christ is in me, I will always thirst. In fact, David expresses this thirst in Psalm chapter 42. Notice how David puts it here. Psalm chapter 42. As a deer pants for flowing streams, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. And shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my food day and night. David here is expressing this thirst of the heart, this thirst of the soul. David looked up to heaven and said, God, now I understand. I used to think that my, my heart's thirst after this and that. My heart thirsts after you. Only God can satisfy. My question to all of you is here this afternoon is this. Have God, has God been able to quench our thirst? Or like this woman, are we still searching for something to fill this emptiness of the heart? You know, this woman, the Bible says, she has had six men in her life. Do you know what that means? She was kind of like a prostitute. She was trying to quench her thirst with men. And that's the problem today in our world. Maybe for us, it's not men or women, but maybe it's what? It's alcohol, drugs, sex, or something else. 
People today are going left and right to try to find something to fill the heart with. I want to challenge you right now, dear friends, all of you, those who are listening to you, try Jesus if you've not tried it. You will never be disappointed. There is a thirst in our hearts that only Jesus can quench. In fact, Jesus says, if you drink of that water, you will be thirsty again. But if you drink of my water, you will never be thirsty again. In other words, the moment somebody starts to taste Christ, guess what? You will no longer want the water of the world anymore. You will want Christ and Christ alone. Amen? Not only that, that Jesus says, you will become a fountain of living water into everlasting life. You know what happens when Jesus steps into our lives? Because that's the water. It's Christ himself. The moment Jesus steps into our lives, there is in us this desire to share him with others. And this is my story. Maybe you might think that I was always a Christian. Yes, I grew up in the Christian church, but I, I was not always a Christian, Lydia. No. It was the time I was in the church while my heart was running after the things of this world. Mm. But there's something that happened the day I gave my life to Jesus. Boy, there was nothing like walking with God. I'm not a saint, but I can tell you something. My sins have been forgiven. And I can tell you that in spite of not being a saint, my God loves me. He's began a work in me, and he's continuing that work. Until that day you shall come to take us home. I believe that these four, three people, we, we baptized one already. These four people who, be, who are going to get baptized today, one is already done. The reason you're stepping into that water is because you've started to taste that water. Am I right? I'm going to invite some of you as we go into the water to share the reason why you're getting into the water. Okay, I want to make sure that you're not getting into the water because I put a gun here and say, if you don't get baptized, I'll kill you. I, I pray that you will be able to share the reason why you're stepping into the water. May God bless all of us here so that Jesus will quench our thirst. I say it again. Nothing in this world can fill this emptiness of the heart. Only Jesus can. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm going to invite um, Rosie. Would you like to come here? Please share with us. In fact, I'm going to invite the three of us uh, who will be baptized to come forward, please. I'd like to. It's like a wedding. It is a wedding. We're going to marry Jesus right here. Amen. And like, like, like any wedding, we have what we call the vow. So we're going to, we're going to pronounce the vow. And ask you some questions, and if you agree with the questions, you, you just have to say yes. If you don't agree, you say no, but I will not baptize you. Okay, so, so the first question is this Do you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ? Amen. Praise God. Do you believe that this book that I hold called the Bible is the word of God where he speaks to you? Do you believe in everything that this word says? Amen. Do you believe that God loves you and he has designed a plan to save you? Amen. That's what the Bible calls the gospel. Do you believe that you are a sinner and that you are in need of Jesus to be saved? Amen. Would you like today to tell the whole people who are here that not only would you want to be baptized, but you want to follow Jesus all the way? Amen. Would you like to do that? Praise God. Do you believe that this God who gave his life to you on the, at the cross will come again? Do you believe that? It's in the Bible. Do you have desire to prepare yourself for the return of Jesus? Amen every day. Is it your desire to obey his word? In fact, the Bible has given us the Ten Commandments. The Bible has given us the Ten Commandments to keep holy. 
Is it your desire by God's grace as you come up out of the water to start keeping God's commandments to others? Amen. There's a day God has set apart called the Sabbath day. Is it your desire to keep the Sabbath holy? We've studied that the Sabbath is, is a date with God. Don't forget that, dear visitors. There is a day called the Sabbath. We want to learn about that Sabbath day. A wonderful day God has set apart so that He and these people can date each other, get to know each other, and praise His name. Is it your desire to keep your body pure as the temple of God? To eat the right food that the Bible talks about. Drink the right drink. Mm -hmm. Yes. The Bible says that the body is the temple of God. It's a way to drink as children of God. A way to eat. Is it your desire to keep the temple of God holy by God's grace? Is it your desire to get me to this water? Bury your sin. Come up out of the water, a new person with Jesus. Amen. To follow him all the way as you prepare yourself for eternity. Last question, is it your desire to join the body of Christ, the church of God, to keep his commandments, to be a part of the church, to be a blessing as we prepare ourselves for him? Amen. Can we say amen? Praise God. You've heard, my dear friends, that these people, they want to marry Jesus. And we want to support you in this. So right now, we're going to pray for you, and then we're going to step into the water. I'm going to ask my brother, the one who's filming, please come and pray for these people. Shall you? Amen. Georgie is a wonderful man of God who loves Jesus and he's working with the young people and the children. And we would love you to pray for these people. Thank you. Let's pray. A loving Father in heaven, we praise you, Lord, for a wonderful day that you've blessed us with. We praise you, Lord, for by your grace, you withhold the rain from us so that we can rejoice together as family, as our wonderful family, a new family rejoin, join us, Lord, in this wonderful journey with you, Lord. Father, we know that all of heaven has emptied been, and they're all here to witness as they give their life to you, Lord. Amen. Father, I just ask you, Lord, that you will bless them with this journey. Yes. Whatever lives throw at, at them, Lord, may they remember your goodness and how you have been faithful to them and all that they will, you'll be teaching them along the way. Thank you so much for the wonderful family that you've created that we'll be able to learn more of you, Father, as we look forward to your soon return. We thank you, Lord, and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, God bless you. We will give the chance to Rosie to share a little bit why she's stepping into the water. Go ahead, my dear. Children, I am happy Sabbath back. Oh, it's a privilege, and I'm so happy to be here finally and say that Lord, I am. I'm here. Yeah. All I've been doing is just waiting for God to say. Just so prayers of my church family, family, and all I want to be is alive in Christ. And I can tell you that last week it really oh, for myself I'm sick, and for this sickness to come back. Oh, years. Oh, I knew what the devil was doing, but Lord, I have a family who's been praying for me. I have a God who's still, you know, trying to run after me. I was like, Rose, when I'm not done with you. I'm not done with you. So, last week has been rough for me. In my mental state, I'm trying to pull myself away with all these it was too fast. I was like, oh, but my arm is broken, but how? Oh, but you know, God is so good. He is truly good. And I can't wait to walk in the way. And oh, 
just a song that comes to my mind. Um, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And that's the one I want to follow. Jesus. Staying alive in Christ is all I want. So, Praise Amen. Yeah. I have a too. We're going to go The Bible says in Mark that there is joy in heaven when a sinner repents. Rosie has been growing in the church. The enemy has been trying to win her, but it's a miracle that she's in the water today. Last year, she, she spent a whole year at East Scotland. We've fallen in love with this lady here. She's such a blessing. In fact, we need to come to know her. But we need to come to East Scotland Church. So please come. So it's a blessing to us, to the children. We love you, dear. Amen. Amen. But we cannot compare our love to the love of God. He's unto you. And we cannot praise God enough for how you responded to his call. Amen. We praise God for that. Family, thank you so much for coming to witness this moment. Which heaven is witnessing right now. Before we baptize our sister, I will first of all pronounce a blessing prayer for our dear sister. Let's bow our heads. Our Heavenly Father, as we just bow our heads, we have this enormous feeling and we're just so happy. We are overjoyed to know that your spirit is present as we are standing beside our sister Rosie. It is with joy, Lord, that both Pastor Shonwell and myself will have the privilege of joining her in the waters of baptism. And right now, Lord, apart from this very important public declaration of her personal stand for you, we know too that the angels of heaven are also watching right now. And so it is our prayer, Lord, that in this new day, there is a brand new life that will await Rosie when she rises out of the waters of life. And so this is our prayer this afternoon, that everyone that stands to witness yes. this personal stand from Rosie will experience the true joy of knowing that soon, Lord, she will be in your big family that we all belong to in your precious name.
sister Rosie, because you love the Lord Jesus and because you want to follow Jesus all the way until he returns. It is our privilege, my privilege as a minister of the gospel, to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. now hear another testimony um, as uh, we, we proceed and this time it's going to be our sister Lillian My dear sister, please make your way here. pray father in heaven what a miracle is taking place in the water the world might not understand what's going on and that's fine but we understand you've given us your spirit and your word to help us to understand what's going on you have stepped into the life of our sister in a powerful way you've shown her not only jesus but the teachings of christ the doctrines of the bible she's been blown away by these truths we thank you that you've led her to know about the Sabbath, too. And you've helped her to know about your return. The signs of the time showing us that Jesus is coming soon. Thank you that you've touched our sister. And now she wants to keep herself not only in Christ. She's done that already. But into the body of Christ, the church of God. Please bless her. Bless her family. May they all come to know you. May they all give you their lives to you. May they all prepare themselves for your soon return. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Sister Lillian, because you love Jesus and because you love the truth, love the Sabbath truth, you love everything about the Bible. We've seen that in you. We've been excited to see how the Lord has been leading you. Because you love God and you, you want to follow Him, you want to obey His commandments by His grace, it is our privilege, my dear sister, as minister of the gospel and as an elder of the church, to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 
We praise God for Liliana and Rosie. The church has been blessed also with a special lady. Um, her name is Vivian. We are so blessed this afternoon to have not only Vivian, but Sam with us. Sam, God bless your heart, bro. This woman loves you, you know that. Yes, she's, she's been talking so much about you and the children. Thank you for coming to honor your wife's baptism. It means a lot to us. Thank you so much. And I've heard that the mother-in-law also is there. Wow, she's beautiful. Can you see that? She's beautiful too. Bless your heart. Thank you for choosing to be with us and the whole family. Amar, is, this, is it the sister-in-law too? Wow, thank you. This is big to us. We really appreciate that. We would love to invite Vivian, please come and share with us what the Lord puts on your heart. Mm, it seems you eat a lot, my dear. Mm, God bless your heart. We pray that God will bless the little baby. In fact, Vivian told us, Pastor, I, I would love before I, 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 I give birth to that baby to give my life to Jesus. I'll be, I'd love to be born again before this baby is born. Amen. Now, beautiful. Yes, Vivian, please talk to me. Our dear family in Christ and all our sisters and families and friends who are gathered here today. Um, today has finally come. Bless your heart. Bless your heart. For those of you who don't know, um, I came from the Sunday church. I grew up in a Sunday church, um, but I can honestly say that I didn't know God. Going to church was it's a tradition for me. That's what I'm used to. And Sunday is a holy day. That's what I knew. I got to a point in my life where I was so hungry, so thirsty. My soul was longing. So empty. I turned to the things of this world. I tried the pleasures of this world, but I found nothing. I was still left empty. There was only one way, and was to find God. And I can't find God in anyone or anywhere, but in his word. Amen. I can honestly say that coming into the Seventh Day Adventist Church wasn't by anyone influencing me or anyone talking talking to me, but I I found it in the Bible myself. When I got into the Bible for myself. That's when I found the God, the true God, the God of the Bible. And it was through reading his word that I was convicted of this one sin that I've been guilty of. And that is keeping the Sabbath day. As I was reading the Bible, as I got into to know God, as I got to know him through his word, I fell more in love with him. And because I fell in love with him, I valued his commandments. It used to be a burden for me. It used to be a punishment. But as I come to know this loving God, I get to know that um, his commandments is all about his character, all about love. 
in John 14, 15, it says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Yes, sir. So out of love, I want to keep his commandments. I was led also to James 2, 10. Yes, yes. If you keep the whole law, but stumble at one point, you are guilty of all. So I realized that I've been keeping a whole nine, but not the one, which is the Sabbath. Soon as God opened my eyes to the truth, and also in um. What's the verse? James um, 4, 17. To one who knows what is right to do, I must not have that as a man. So I thought I'll open my eyes to each truth, to this commandment. I, out of love for him, I wanted to obey his commandments. I set my kids down. I told them what's happening and what I've learned from the Bible and that we are stop we are going to stop going to Sunday church. We are going to start keeping Sabbath. I said we were we are going to look for church, Seventh day Adventist church, and I'm going to look for Seventh day Adventist school for you. Since then up to now, here we are. Praise God for his word. As I step into the water today. I'm divorcing the world. I'm dying to self. Yes. Putting on Christ. Yes. To live, to live for Him, for His purpose, for what He has created me for. And I choose to follow with all my heart. Yes. And I only love him because he has shown me to himself. He first loved me. Yes. Hey, hey, come on now. Um, one more verse is so. um verse John chapter five, verse nine and ten. Yes. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. Whoa. So this is the witness of God, which he has testified of his son. He who believes in the son of God has the witness in himself. And this means a lot to me because I did not find his truth. I did not find God anywhere else but in his Bible. And he has manifested himself to me through his word and nowhere else. This is my little testimony. I have more, but I, I, I will need to do a whole series on it. <laughs> May God bless you all um, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Um, will, will, Sam, would you like to come forward with your children? You can see the baptism for yourself. Thank you. And even the family, too. Feel free and approach. It's, it's, it's also your day. The beautiful thing is that God loves everyone. You can be a Muslim. God loves you. You can be from the Catholic Church. God loves you. You can be from any denomination. God loves you. But God has a truth that he wants to show you. And as he shows you that truth, you may like our dear sister, you will choose to obey that truth. Thank you. Let us pray. Father, we have been overwhelmed and touched by the testimony of Vivian. Lord, what a woman. A woman of faith who has made a personal stand for you. Your angels will be overjoyed to hear her give herself to you, that she wants to be an anchor 
in your kingdom. We thank you, Lord, that in this prayer time that we can just pause and uplift Vivian to you and her husband, Sam, and all the children and all the family, the extended family that are here. We thank you, Lord, that they have come to witness Vivian's public testimony to you. It is our prayer, Lord, that once she rises out of these waters, that her life will be brand new. She will experience a new beginning. And she will have the joy of knowing that she has you in her heart every day and that she is following, Lord, your calling for her and that the law, the perfect law, is what she wants to follow. Thank you, Lord, for Pastor Jean Well and his leadership and for his ministry that we have witnessed today people who have made a personal stand for you. And as Vivian is preparing now to be baptized, we ask, Lord, that those who may be listening right now, those that are on Facebook, those that are present right now, it is our appeal that Pastor Will, in his time, be able to speak to each one of you who has a conviction that the Spirit is speaking to them personally right now. This is our prayer, Lord. Thank you once again for a high seven. May this be your precious name. Amen. Dearest sister Vivian, because you've met Jesus and you've fallen in love with Jesus, and because you want to keep his commandments holy, including the Sabbath, because you want to become a disciple of Christ to lead others to know Christ, it is our privilege, myself as a minister of the gospel and my brother as an elder, to baptize you in the name of the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. As it is my custom, whenever there's a baptism, I like to make appeals. Yes, sometimes one person could be touched by what we see, what they see. So it is my privilege as a minister of the gospel to ask anybody who would want prayer. You want to say, Pastor, please pray for me because I've been touched with what is going on here. I might, I might not fully understand what's going on, but I know Jesus is calling me to give my life to him. If it is your desire, I'd love to pray for you. Is there one person who wants to just raise their hands and say, Pastor, please pray for me. I'd love really one day myself to be baptized like the Bible teaches by immersion. I'd love to give my life to Jesus. Is there one person who wants to raise your hands? Feel free. If you don't raise your hand, it will not affect me. Okay, believe me. You do that for yourself and for Jesus. Is there one person? Two persons want to say, Pastor, please pray for me. I'd love to prepare myself for the following baptism. In fact, there are some of you right now, you're watching. Huh? There are two there. Yeah? Praise the Lord. Did you hear that? Brother Allen, there are two people who have raised their hands for baptism on Zoom right now. Praise God. There's more. Praise God. This is wonderful. Is there anybody here who would love to say, Pastor, please pray for me. I'd love one day to be baptized. I'd like to pray for you right now. And I'd like to pray for those on Facebook also. There are some on Facebook. 
Feel free. We would love to pray for you. Okay? Let us pray, shall we? Let's pray. Father, we are blown away by this moment that we've had with you. Just listening to the stories of Rosie, the story of Lillian and Vivian. Lord, it's not the work of men, what we're seeing right there. It's your Holy Spirit. It's your word. We can only praise you for what has happened and what is happening. There are more people who want to give their lives to you. Bless them. Some are even on Zoom right now. They've raised their hands. Bless their hearts of God. Please prepare them for the next baptism. There are those who are here with us. Maybe they've not raised their hands, but deep in their hearts. They've been touched by what they saw. Bless them, God. I pray a special prayer again for the family of Vivian who's here in numbers. Bless them. Bless Sam, the mother, the sister. Thank you for them. Bless the children. You have a big plan for this family. Oh, may you bless them. May they come, all of them, may they come to know Jesus fully. Not only them, but all of us, God. We are on this journey to know you fully. And may when Christ comes, Sam and his family will be there with you in heaven. And not only Sam, we thank you for Rose's family who is here too. Most of them have been baptized, but we thank you for this family. We thank you for the witness of Rosie upon many other people that we don't know, but you know. Bless her, bless Casey also. Bless Lillian and her family so that what has happened in the water will spread. That these three souls will become living water, as you have said in your word, a fountain of living water, so that others might drink in their fountain and find Christ and be saved. We pray and we thank you for this wonderful time of how much you've appeased the rain. And we've had a wonderful time so far. May your name be praised in Jesus' name. Amen.
Two, two. <laughs> Nothing between. Amen. Three, two, two. Wow, what beautiful, beautiful. When we look around us, what we see, we see if God had turned up and hold the heavens and so that we can celebrate this this beautiful occasion.
nothing between, eh, brother Lau? There's nothing like Jesus can move. Yeah, even the world, the world cannot be the name of Jesus. You know, I remember in the, in the Bible story of a, young, a blind man. He was blind. And guess what happened? Nothing prevented him between him and his Savior. Mm. Yeah, so in all those things, uh, you know, me, that, that story tells us it's nothing. If you are blind in this world, nothing's going to prevent you from giving Jesus. Showers of blessing. Don't sing too loud. The rain might come there. I think some of us might need to be anointed. Amen. Amen. Showers of blessing. Showers of blessing. This is the promise of God. Tenderly. Kim, you know, while we're singing this song, man, the rain might not be hitting us, but the Spirit of God is hitting us. You know, I start to, to, to weep in, my, in, in my, my heart. Why? Because people are surrendering, are surrendering just to hear those testimonies. And they refresh me again. A shower of this is falling down as we sing this wonderful song. Softly. It's great. So Why should we tarry? 
God of the Bible is a God who's calling people to come home. We're going to call those three new people in Christ to come and sit in front. Um, yes, we've, we've got something for you. So, Vivian, Vivian and Rosie, praise God. You know, the Bible presents baptism as a wedding as a marriage between us and Christ. And just as somebody is getting married, you remember when you got married, you had to sign papers, Gloria, some papers you had to sign. So we're gonna do some signings here. Amen. And we're gonna call our dear sister, Karen. She's our faithful clerk. Bless my hair. Bring those certificates, my dear. Yes, we have the one Lydia. Yes. We have an elder that would wish to, could want it so much to be here, but his health is not too good today. Um, it's Elder Ross. We miss Elder Ross, eh? Wonderful man of God with his dear wife, Nancy. Maybe he's watching right now. God bless you, Elder Ross. We miss you. But we thank God that you're watching with us. And we pray that for your full restoration of your health. God bless. Yes. And then we have uh, Rosie. Yes. There we go. That's the signing. Oh. No turning back. Eh? By God's grace. Amen. Commitment to Christ. And then we have Vivian, our sister Vivian. So Sam, don't panic. Eh? It's, it's just Vivian and, and God. Eh? God bless you, my man. That's my buddy there. That's my good friend. Praise God. Amen. We've got also a gift for, for you. Look at those beautiful children with gifts here. Wow. So for those who do not know, in, in, in the gift itself is a book. It's a handbook for discipleship. By God's grace, at East Auckland, we don't want you to just be members to warm the pews. We must be disciples. And disciples are people who go and make other disciples. So, so you will have this book free. It's a beautiful book. And you have all those flowers free also. 
Amen. It's all free. Amen. Praise God. Sunshine. So we, we pray that you will read the book. If you don't read the book, we will take them back from you. Okay? <laughs> yes. No, but the book will bless you. In fact, for those who are free every Wednesday, um, Jay, we're having the best time in studying this book. Okay? So please go ahead, my brother, and give to the rest. We're so blessed to have you. Um, Miss Stockland is blessed to have you three as our members of the church. We praise God so much for you. I'm sure Elder Ross also is uh, he's, he's hugging you. Elder Ross is hugging you there as an elder. That's why uh, Georgie, in the meantime, Georgie, do you have any guitar with you? You want to sing that, that song one a day that will be. Oh, Georgie. I think Pastor Dyson knows it. What a day that will be. Okay, that's fine, my brother. So, so uh, Lillian says, her son has been watching from America. Is he still around? You don't know? Is he still watching? It's well now. Yeah, it's one in the morning, but praise God, the sun is able to watch. Amen. From America. Praise God. Thank you. Your daughter from Australia, too. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Okay, we're going to stand up all of us please let's sing that song if you can i will give you the words as we go on let's sing <laughs> Thank you. 
Pastor Dyson so much for giving us their place here. Can we say amen? Please let us thank God for these two, Pastor Dyson and Pastor Joe, for just cleaning everywhere and just, we've been at home with you, my pastor. Thank you so much. God bless you all. Please pray for us as the church and pray for the people also who have been baptized. Thank you. Let's pray. Father God, we have witnessed on this beautiful Sabbath, your love and your mercy, and also the salvation that you had made it possible for us through your son, Jesus Christ. The three souls that had committed their lives to you through baptism. We know it's, um, at this time of age, it's a hard decision to make. But it is easier for them because they made it with you. And with the, the presence of your Holy Spirit. And so, Lord, we pray for these three souls that you will continue to be with them. Guide them and protect them. Keep them under your arms, your loving arms. May they... May this be the beginning of a witness for you, for those who are seeking and looking for your love. And may you bless them in a very special way with their families and children. And thank you also for Pastor and all the members of this church who have come to witness this very special occasion. And for those who are viewing this um, service through Zoom, Lord, we pray that you will be with them. So our desire is for that day when your son Jesus Christ will return and take us home to that promised land that's in that promise for each and every one of us. So bless us and be with us as we ask in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. You can come and just wish the three newlywed in Christ. You can come and just, yes, God bless. 